All right, let's talk about sessions, cookies, and keeping our users authenticated. So Next.js documentation actually explained this quite nicely. And you can find this under authentication and session management. And the method that we are going to use is called stateless sessions. So let's take this a step by step. First, we need to install this package called Jose. And this is used for our JSON web tokens. So let's go back to the terminal and say npm install Jose. Then back to our project, we can create a new document in the lib folder, which I would call it sessions.js. Now in here, we can start by creating a secret key variable. We will set this to process.env and within our environment variables, we would create a new variable, call it session underscore secret. So let's just copy this name and go to our .env file. And right here, we can create our secret phrase. Now, this could be anything. For example, my very secret phrase. But again, if we go back to the documentation, they suggest using this open SSL command in our terminal that would give us a random a string. So let's just copy this command to the terminal and paste it here. So this is my secret phrase. I'm just going to copy this whole thing, go back to the project and paste this for our session secret and we can close the env document. Now, from that secret phrase, we want to create an encoded key. So let's say encoded key, and let's set this to a new text encoder, and then use the encode method on this one, which then is looking for a string. So we can pass down our secret key, which is up here. Next, we want to create a couple of functions. The first one is to create a JSON web token. So let's say export async function, and we would call this encrypt and this would take a payload. In this function, we want to return a new sign JWT, which is part of that Jose package we just installed. So this will create a JSON web token for us. This sign JWT is looking for a payload and we just want to pass down this payload that we are accepting as a parameter. Then we want to chain a few other functions. First, we want to set the protected header choose the algorithm for encryption, and we will set the value to HS256, choose the set issued at method, then the expiration time. So this could be a number, a date, or a string. For example, if you want 10 seconds, then this JSON web token would be invalid after 10 seconds. Or let's say, for example, seven days, like this. And lastly, we want to sign using that encoded key we have up here. So this would be the function that would create the JSON web token and sign it for us. And again, this is coming from the Next.js documentation. Next, we want to create another function to decrypt this encrypted signature. So we can create another async function and we would call this decrypt. This would take a session as its parameter because we will save this signature in our sessions. Then we want to decrypt it from the sessions. In this decrypt function, let's have a try catch block. And in the try block, we want to first extract the payload from the JSON web tokens. So let's say await JWT verify. And this is looking for a string, which is coming from up here. So we can say session. So this will be from our sessions and then the key or the secret phrase. So the encoded key. Then as a third argument, we have our options and we can pass the algorithm, which is going to be the same as up here. So if this is successful, we want to return that payload. But if there is an error, we just want to say fail to verify the session. So basically with JSON web tokens, we can create signatures using a secret phrase and some other values that it would mix it all together and creates a string. And when we want to decrypt it or get the data out of that string, we would use the verify function, which is then taking that string, whatever string this function creates and our secret phrase. So if this secret phrase is not the same, this signature cannot verify and therefore it's useless. So this is our encrypt and decrypt function. And lastly, we want to actually create a session in our application. So again, let's create another function. We would call this create session, which would take a user ID. And we want to include the user ID in that signature, which is created up here. So first, let's create a few variables. The first one is expires at. We can pass a new date here. And I'm just going to paste this new date here, which gives us seven days. Then we want to create session and this session is going to use that encrypt function. So this will return a promise. So we want to await for it and use the encrypt 
function that is looking for a payload. Now for the payload, we want to pass an object and pass our user ID and the expires at date. When that is done, we want to save this into the cookies. For that, we want to create a cookie a store variable first, and we will set this to await cookies from next headers. So this is a function we need to invoke it. So make sure you import cookies from next forward slash headers. Now, after creating all these variables, we want to grab that cookie store and set a new cookie. The first argument here is the name. You can call this, for example, user session or whatever name you choose. The second argument is the value for this session. And we want to use this session variable we created using the encrypt method, which is our JSON web token signature. So again, this is going to be a string. Now, as a third argument to the set method, we want to pass options in an object. First, we want to set the HTTP only to true. We set the secure to true. Then we want to set the expires property to that expires at variable up here. We can set the same site to either lax, none, or strict. And I will choose lax, which is kind of in between. And we set the path to forward slash. So that is going to be our cookie. We call it session and the value is going to be that JSON web token signature. So now all is left is to call this function in our auth.js document in the register function. We have a comment right here that says create a session and we just want to say create session which needs to be imported and it is looking for a user ID. So remember when we created a new document in our database, this results variable would give us an object with two properties, acknowledged and inserted ID. So we want the inserted ID and this will be included in our JSON web token signature. Now, remember this is returning a promise. So let's just add a wait here. And if we've done everything correctly, this should all work properly. Let's go back to our website and give it a reload and open the application tab in the dev tools. So under cookies and then the local host, we don't have any cookies at the moment, but let's register a new user. So with this information, if I press register, we are back to the dashboard. We can see we have a new cookie called session. The value of that is the JSON web token signature and we can check it out in a moment, but you can also see under domain, we have localhost, we have the path, we have the expires at, so that is seven days from now. It's going to expire on the 13th of December. We get the size, the HTTP only set to true, the secure is set to true, so we know it is properly saved under cookies. Now let's copy this value for JSON web token and go to this website, jwt.io. In here we have an example. If we replace this with our value, you notice we get the header and the algorithm is set to the one we chose. We got the payload and in the payload, we have the user ID. So this user ID is ending at 9E78. Let's go to MongoDB Atlas and refresh our collections. Down here, we have our new user and the ID is the same as this ID in the JSON web token payload. Now, right now it says invalid signature and to verify this signature, we can use that secret phrase and the decrypt function, which we created to verify that signature. And we will use this in the login function, but that's how we can create sessions in the Next.js application and save them in our cookies using the cookies function of Next.js. So we covered a lot of ground just through creating our register functionality. And from here on, things will get easier because we set up most of the things. And in the next videos, we will talk about login functionality and also updating our layout based on the authenticated state of the users and protecting routes for guests and auth users. So let's continue in the next video.